Hello everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So a bit of a gloomy day here, good day to stitch. Although, honestly, any day is a good day to stitch for me, right? <laughs> Yeah, I saw a meme once that said, oh, it's too cold outside, better stay in and read. Oh, it's too hot outside, better stay in and read, you know. <laughs> uh, looks like it might rain, better stay in and read, said, although for me lately, it's better stay in and stitch. <laughs> yeah, it looked like it might rain on me, so I ended up doing my exercise in the house today using my uh, Strider machine. It took a little getting used to. It's not quite the same exact motion as walking, I find. Because of course you're not lifting your feet, they're just kind of going back and forth like that, so. Yeah, but I felt myself work up a sweat, so I'm assuming I still got the exercise. Uh, actually, I read a review when I was looking at machines to buy online and somebody's saying, oh, there's no resistance to this thing. There must, you know, it doesn't feel like it's much of a workout. And then uh, they uh, edited and added, uh, never mind, I couldn't move for like three days after using it. So uh, actually it is a pretty good workout. So yeah. You can't really use things that have a lot of resistance because I've got a connective tissue thing. Yeah. Even five pound weights and I pulled things out of alignment so yeah I have to be really careful with the kind of exercise I do oh pardon me Okay, 157. So we got. Now we're at the um, fountain. Instead of uh, stuff going vertically, stuff is going more horizontally in this area. Okay, there's more straight lines here since the fountain is a artificial structure, right? So. So yeah, it causes a fair amount of color changing, stitching diagonally. But that's okay. I mean, honestly, anywhere on this pattern has been a fair amount of color changing for the most part, <laughs> except for maybe that center uh, part that was the sky, that was some bigger blocks. But just about everywhere else, yeah, there's a lot of detail, so a lot of confetti. A lot of color changing. Okay, doesn't want to go neatly there, so go the other way. yesterday. Oh, I was so tired. I couldn't concentrate at all. So I didn't stitch anything on this. I did some knitting instead because yeah, my brain was fried. <laughs> so I got like four hours of sleep that night. Ugh. Yeah, it's a real luck of the draw. for me, so. Always been like that. Yeah, I had people say, oh, it's because you drink coffee too late, which it wasn't that late, but I don't anymore. But I said, yeah, I've had this problem since I was two and I wasn't drinking coffee then, so. Yeah, people like to just, you know, 
think there's such an easy solution for stuff and it would be sure nice if it was but yeah generally the person living with the condition has already tried everything you're going to suggest <sighs> well as i've said before i'm more of a night owl and i think a lot of it is just having to sleep on the schedule that uh you know society runs on <laughs> yeah like somebody was saying you know if you don't have the delayed circadian um sleep phase they said you know would you say that you had insomnia because you couldn't fall asleep at two in the afternoon and stay asleep until you know and uh, of course you wouldn't because that's the wrong time for you to be asleep Right? So, yeah, night owls, it's the same thing for us. What are considered the correct hours to sleep are not the hours our bodies want to sleep at. So, of course, we have difficulty sleeping. I also actually was reading, it was quite uh, interesting. They said that um, in, like, medieval times and stuff, they, um, one of the reasons they would often have a you know, middle of the night prayers and things was because your natural sleep phase was to sleep for, you know, a few hours, three or four hours, wake up, be active for a bit, and then go back to sleep for a few hours. This sleeping eight solid hours is sort of supposedly a more modern industrial age thing, which I thought was, yeah, kind of interesting because, I mean, how many times have you woken up in the middle of the night to, you know, get a drink of water or whatever, and you sort of feel like, hey, I'm awake, I could actually do stuff now, you know? And then when you actually have to wake up in the morning, it's like, duh, <laughs> because you're uh, often in the middle of a dream cycle, right? So, yeah, because, you know, you have lighter and deeper phases of sleep. And if you get woken up in one of the uh, deeper ones, that can, yeah, really throw you off for the whole day sometimes. <clears throat> Sure, yeah, I was grabbing the wrong thread. As usual, a lot of similar colors close together, so that is why I grid. Yeah, or it was pretty interesting. I don't know if I mentioned this before. I was reading that um, a lot of um, old recipes and stuff almost read like spells because it would say you know say three hail marys or whatever while you're stirring the mixture and they said well it's actually because of course a lot of you know in the old days people didn't have clocks as easily available and so the time it takes say to say three hail marys or whatever it was they were telling you was approximately equal to say two minutes or something and so that was a way of people being able to keep time, but later it almost reads like it's a spell or something, which I thought was really neat. But it was really just a way of, of keeping time, so. Of course, it wasn't a perfect, because some people will obviously say the words faster than others, but it was a good approximation, so. Yeah, I found that pretty interesting. Yeah, or they were saying, of course, you know, back when you had your stoves or ovens running on fire and depending on how much, you know, wood or coal you have in them and how hot it's burning depends on how long. And so they would have, say, have you put your hand to reach inside and see how long you can keep it in there will tell you how hot it is. I'm thinking, okay, but then the problem is, of course, some people have a much higher tolerance than others, right? <laughs> so again, it's a approximation, but it wouldn't be a perfect uh, measurement. I guess you would have to learn to adjust it for your own personal uh, heat tolerance or whatever.
actually jumping around with the thread here as I cross them because I want the thread to end up over to the, uh, the right so that I can do these stitches up here and then go back down without closing anything in. So that's why if you were wondering why I did it that way, that's why. <laughs> Just kind of adjust as I go. There. I'm going to go in the emptier hole and go back down in the crowded one. There, just trying to park it, not mark it. Okay, so this one I'm gonna tuck away. It's right in the corner. All right, this piece is not very long, so I don't know if it'll be long enough to do all these stitches here or if I'll have to add another, another piece. We shall see. I think this will be just enough, barely, yeah, for the ones that I highlighted. That's all we're gonna get. Yeah, so my son is still training for his triathlon. He's doing it with some other kids, so they each take one sport. So he's doing the running part. Yeah, and uh, they're going to do the running part at... Um, the park and they run around the lake three times so he's up to almost two laps of the lake so <clears throat> getting there his uh his dad is taking him training so he gets his exercise too and I said he finally had to buy um runners I guess sneakers you yanks would call them Canada we call them runners or tennis shoes or whatever running shoes but um yeah, he had to buy the first pair he's had since I met him because he just, he doesn't do sports and he just wears work boots all the time. Or, I mean, occasionally if we went to the beach, he'd, he'd wear sandals there. But, um, yeah, like, he basically didn't own shoes, just dress shoes, which, you know, hasn't worn pretty much since we went to a wedding, and uh, work boots. Yeah, I can't remember what 
context it was in, but somebody said, oh, people don't wear work boots when they're on vacation. I'm like, my husband does. We've totally walked on the beach while he just wore his steel toe boots because he didn't remember to pack anything else. <sighs> he has like four sets of sandals because we go on vacation and he always forgets to pack them. And then, yeah, realizes, oh, shoot, he needs them. So then we just go and buy a cheap pair and, you know, bring them home. And then the next vacation, same thing. He forgets again. Ooh. So do you know you have more sandals than me? Because I just buy, like, you know, one and wear them until they fall apart. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. All right. Uh... Okay. Sorry about that interruption. We're back. Yeah, I had a de delivery there for uh, my husband, something for work. Yeah, even when they don't need a signature, they still try to hand it off to you personally. Not many of them just leave it. I guess maybe they don't want to be on the hook in case somebody walks off with it, which I guess I understand. We have one driver who's always mixing up our uh, address with someone else's um, from a street over. Yeah, and um, it's gotten to the point where my husband has asked those people that he orders it from if they can please not use that carrier because it's so bad. And I mean, sometimes he's ordering car parts that are not cheap, you know. And I felt bad because, yeah, the guy from across the street or from the street over that got it brought it to us. And I mean, they were heavy boxes and I felt bad for the poor guy having to pick them up and, you know, load them in his car and bring them over here. But thankfully we got them. Yeah, they were um, new struts for my, um, my vehicle because mine were uh, wearing out. That was actually before the accident, but thankfully... Uh, they didn't get damaged, so... Because I remember thinking that, oh, we had just spent like 400 bucks, you know, doing maintenance on that car. It better not get written off. So, yeah, I was very glad that it did not. Yeah, that's one thing here. I said, when we lived in uh, BC, where they use salt on the roads uh, whenever it snows, which isn't a lot, but enough. You know, if you don't wash it off fairly soon after, you know, it rusts and corrodes and things. So that's not nice. Well, here they don't really use salt because it's too cold. If it goes below minus 25 Celsius, then it just doesn't work anymore. Salt water will still freeze. So they use sand. So we don't really have that problem here. But um, ours is that, of course, that the roads are very rough and potholy because of the um, big temperature changes makes things crack and because they expand and contract and yeah so instead it's more wear and tear on the physical parts of your vehicle like your suspension and your your struts and things and yeah I said you could hear mine it was kind of made this creaky sound I said almost like if you had a big plastic box that you were sort of twisting and it was going yeah so it was time to replace them I mean, plus mileage, but I don't use my car a lot. Yeah, it's got like 130,000 kilometers on it, so. Not bad for a vehicle that's over 10 years old, so yeah. Oh, whenever we go on longer trips, we take my husband's truck, so. For one thing, feel safer in a bigger vehicle because everybody basically drives big vehicles around here. Yeah, that took some getting used to when we moved out here. Wasn't used to so many pickup trucks everywhere. Not now I am. <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable driving a big vehicle. My Honda Element is the biggest that I've driven. And that's not that big. Okay, let me see. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to go off the other colors, but they're so similar. I couldn't be certain. I was in the right place, so I cross-checked with the uh, 
grid line. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, pardon me. Oh. Okay. I'm going to park that there. Because there's enough to do sort of those three. But then the other stitches will be done with a different piece of thread. Just sort of planning ahead a little bit. Again, this is right on the line. I could have left it for the next diagonal, but since it's still threaded, I will just do two more stitches right along that edge. <clears throat> oh yeah, we are definitely going to end up with multiple threads here. I can see that now. Goodness, that is really, really uneven. There we are. Oh yeah, I can see a lot of changing colors in my immediate future. Sometimes I just turn the search feature off like this when I'm going to be switching back and forth after sort of every stitch. Yeah, just kind of uh, saves me a bit of time. So I can see some more of this number three stitch below, but I'm going to be doing another strand for that. I sort of determined that earlier when I was, um, when I highlighted it, I could see. I'm just going to check the length of threads I've already parked as well, since that is going to determine some of it. Okay. Okay, so I see what I'm going to do with this. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to do these two here. I'm going to have lots of this number three. I can tell that right now. That is okay. Park that there. Okay.
big one room switch by itself. Yeah, this piece is not very long. Yeah, I think I took less steps on my machine than I do when I go for a walk, but it almost feels like I got more of a workout. So I guess we'll see how I feel tomorrow, how sore I am. That'll tell me. <laughs> yeah. So I went for the sort of the same amount of time that I normally take for my walk, which is about 45 minutes. So we'll see, yeah. I got lots of leftover bits of this color left. It's being used a lot in this pattern. Yeah, that actually worked out really nice. Bringing this thread back up was sort of just enough, I think. It's 
So yeah, that is why I parked things the way that I did. My method to my madness, as I say. Oops. I had two needles and then none. Just wanted the one. Okay. Just gonna take a peek. What else is here? Ah. Yeah. Okay, that's a fairly long piece too. Okay. Okay, so this will be one that can be ended soon. Ah, and it is a short piece, so it works out well. Yeah, I think I do more um, changing colors here than I do stitching. <laughs> oh well. Eventually it'll be done. to see how long this piece is because I have two okay about a medium length okay make sure I'm not sewing down other threads Good. Oh, I get musical threads.
I decided to add another one here, that's right. I remember now. Perfect. Just the right length of the piece to do that as well. Would help if I tried to actually thread it through the eye, not the point. <laughs> finally do these three at once. <clears throat> Pardon me. It's what I was trying to work my way towards. Okay, so I think this piece might be just enough for this four that I've highlighted. We'll see. Yes, I can actually get a little bit more there.
just sometimes twist it together when I have shorter pieces to sort of keep them a little better contained, hopefully. Okay, let's see what I'm gonna do. I may actually go further down the diagonal, work back up, because I think, yeah, that is sort of gonna make the clearest path for me. You know, do this method long enough and I can see which paths I want to take pretty quickly now. It used to take me longer, but now it's pretty easy for me. little blue end was coming through. Let's see if it comes back up. Nope, seems good. Just unthreading that one because it's going to be a while till I get back to it. It's not the right color. Yeah, I could tell first it wasn't the right shade, and also then when I looked at the grid lines, it was not in the correct place. So I knew I'd grab the wrong thread then. Okay. Okay, so now I did that because, yeah, now it's easier to do these without doing things out of order and closing stuff in. Oh, man. Got a bit of a headache, I'm afraid. Yeah. Pressure changes and the weather do it to me. And unfortunately, in Canada, we get a lot of those. <laughs> Things can change very quickly. Yeah, there's one that said, you know, you're Canadian if, and it says you've used heat and air conditioning in the same week, sometimes in the same day. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Oh, pardon me. Hmm.
Oh, pardon me. Okay, this time I'm crossing as I go because of where I want to carry the thread, where I want it to end up. Yeah, have you figured out where I'm going yet? <laughs> those all together. Yeah, lots of blue and gray here. Fountain stones in the water.
two threads here that are kind of going to meet in the middle. But that works just fine for me. I don't mind. Yeah, I've seen some where people don't park in the next diagonal at all. They just end it off so that they don't have so many hanging threads. But I wouldn't want to, I think, do more stopping and restarting than I absolutely have to use up more thread that way. At least it would for me. long. Only for a couple of stitches. This may be too short for two, but that's okay. I've got lots of little bits of this color left, so might as well use some of these little pieces up. Yeah, I don't think that's what I'll do. Well, then nothing gets wasted. Yeah, I might have been able to get a second one, but it would have been so close that I think it would have been too fiddly, so. All right, I think that I'm gonna call this a day pretty soon. Got a fair amount done today. Yeah, I'm really excited to see this fountain section up here, the focal point of the, uh, the piece. should be able to get those last two stitches out of that. Okay, so I think we're going to call it a day here. And as usual, uh, thank you so much for uh, joining me and hope to see you here again. All right, thanks everyone. Bye!